So if you're trying to learn about HVAC engineering, you made a really smart choice. HVAC is one of the most important industries in today's world and in today's market. It's, it's essential to learn about HVAC design and HVAC principles, whether you are an engineer or not. In this current video, I'm going to be sharing with you a very important lecture from our HVAC mastery course. The link is in the description to help you get access to years worth of HVAC engineering design expertise and skills, which will help you save time, save cost, save the whole effort in terms of trying to learn this during or within your career straight from the experts. The link is in the description. And if you are new to our channel, if you're not even going to go for the course, it's up to you. Feel free to destroy the like and the subscribe button to stay up to date with the latest releases from our channel. Like I mentioned, this lesson is very important. Let's dive right into it. The refrigeration cycle, or in other words, the vapor compression cycle, it is the core of the HVAC system. It reflects a sequence of processes that are needed to take place in order to condition the air in the space. So it shows us the sequence of operation. It shows us the main components that we should have in order to have a complete cycle, which is called the refrigeration cycle. Now, the refrigeration cycle has four main components and they should be present in any HVAC system, no matter what is the configuration. We have the condenser, we have the evaporator, we have the compressor, and we have the expansion valve. In this schematic, we can see how the four main components are arranged within the basic refrigeration cycle, where we have the evaporator, the condenser, the compressor, and the expansion valve. The flow or the sequence starts with the evaporator and goes counterclockwise towards the compressor, condenser, expansion valve. This is the sequence of operation for the refrigeration cycle. Keep in mind, it's always counterclockwise. Now, in the following slides, we'll examine exactly what happens at every single stage within the cycle. In the diagram on the left side, we can see the four components of the refrigeration cycle. What happens is, at the evaporator, the cold refrigerated space drops the load at the evaporator take where the heat is taken the heat is absorbed through the refrigerant which is passing through the piping as you can see in the red line the heat from the load causes the refrigerant to evaporate as it enters the compressor the compressor just by adding work it compresses the refrigerant which has evaporated and then leaves the compressor at high pressure and goes into the condenser where there's a fan that expels the heat into the environment, following which the cooled refrigerant enters an expansion valve causing its temperature to drop as the pressure is being reduced. On the right hand side, we have a TS diagram, which is the temperature entropy diagram, which is obtained from thermodynamics. Uh, don't worry, we'll not dwell into the details of thermodynamics. This is just simply a representation of the cycle from a thermodynamics perspective, where we can see the cycle going counterclockwise as per the four components of the refrigeration cycle. At stage four to one, we, can, we have the evaporator. At stage one to two, we have the compressor. And from two to three, we have the condenser. Then from three to four, we have the expansion valve. Now, take a minute to take a look at this diagram and you know, note down whatever ideas that you have and cross check with the coming slide whether or not um, your intuition about the cycle is in line with the explanation. In the previous slides, we explained the refrigeration cycle and its main components. 
along with the way they are arranged in terms of a sequence, counterclockwise. Now, in this slide, however, we're going to be explaining with details how does the cycle actually work? How does the refrigeration cycle take place? Let's take a look at the diagram on the right-hand side. We have the components, the compressor, condenser, expansion valve, and the evaporator. We'll be naming the states numerically, one, two, three, four, as we can see on the diagram. Let's start with state number one, which is before the compressor, state number two, after the compressor, state number three, after the condenser, and state number four, after the expansion valve. Now it's clearly presented, so let's get right to the explanation. As we go about the transition from state 1 to 2 across the compressor, the refrigerant is entering the compressor at state 1 as a vapor, and it is comp compressed to the condenser pressure at state 2. As we compress the vapor, the temperature of the vapor increases because the compression process brings the molecules of the vapor together, causing them to collide more frequently which, with each other, in turn increasing their temperature. As we go about state 2, which is at the entrance of the condenser, towards state 3, right after the condenser, the refrigerant enters the condenser as a superheated vapor at state 2 as a result of the compression process like we mentioned following which the heat is rejected to the surroundings by a fan at the condenser causing the refrigerant to leave as a liquid at state 3 so we're transitioning from vapor state towards a liquid state keeping in mind that the temperature of the refrigerant at this state is still above the temperature of the surroundings at this point this is where the expansion valve kicks in. This is where we can see the use of the expansion valve. As we go about state 3, which is at a liquid state, we apply a throttling process using the throttling valve. What does that mean? The liquid at state 3 is throttled to the evaporator pressure by passing it through an expansion valve, where the temperature of the refrigerant drops below the temperature of the conditioned space. We mentioned that at state 3, after the condenser, the state of the refrigerant is a liquid state, correct? However, the temperature of the refrigerant is still higher than the surroundings, which prevents the heat transfer as per the definition of heat transfer, which takes place due to temperature difference. Therefore, we're, we, we, we need to drop down the temperature of the refrigerant. And this is only possible through the use of the expansion valve. W what does it do specifically? It simply drops down the pressure of the refrigerant at state 3, which in turn directly drops down the temperature as well. Therefore, as we transition from state 3 to state 4, the, refrigerant, the refrigerant's temperature is lower than the surrounding temperature. Now, at this point, we got to state 4, which is the entrance of the evaporator, which means we're entering the conditioned space, the space that we need to cool down. The refrigerant enters the evaporator at state 4 as a liquid vapor mixture, and it completely evaporates as it absorbs heat from the conditioned space. So we started off at the compressor with vapor, after the condenser became fluid, as we throttle it using, through the expansion valve, we end up with a mixture, which is a vapor-liquid mixture, where we have a combination of gas and liquid, which is at a lower temperature compared to the surroundings. So once this mixture enters the evaporator, it absorbs the heat from the conditioned space, causing the refrigerant to evaporate and become gaseous again and the cycle repeats. Now, on the previous slide, we had a schematic, but the question always pops up, how does this look like in real life? This is a demonstration for the components of the refrigeration cycle in real. If you open a window AC, uh, which is an example of the decentralized HVAC system, we should keep all these pieces of information in mind, guys, okay? Uh, we'll see all the components as per the refrigeration cycle, interlinked as per the diagram in front of you. 
where we have the compressor, we have the condenser, the expansion valve, and the evaporator. Now, we have a small addition which I would like to highlight for you. Take a look at the color of the lines. The inlet of the compressor will always be give, nominated with the blue color to represent a low pressure. After the compression process, the temperature goes high, therefore we give it the color red, just to represent that we have a transition from a lower temperature to a higher temperature. At the same time, the um, nomenclature for the coloring, blue to red, also explains the transition of pressure from low to high. Because once the vapor goes into the compressor at a low pressure, take a look at this example, for example, it says 17 to 30 PSI. Now, after the compression process, what happened? It became 300 PSI. It means the pressure went up. So the color representation that we have shows basically which lines are hot lines, which ones are cold lines. At the same time, it shows which line is a high pressure line and which line is a low pressure line. So what do you think? I truly hope that you found the current lecture helpful. If you're interested in joining our HVAC mastery course, the same way thousands of professionals across the globe have taken part into our programs and educational programs, professional development programs, corporate training programs, you are more than welcome to join our global community of over 100,000 professionals and counting till date and they'll increase on a day-to-day -day basis from over 175 countries. All of our programs are uh, of premium caliber and they come up with a completion certificate and they include a uh, money-back guarantee in case you find that the program is not fit for you. Take a look at the video description for more details and look forward to seeing you as part of our global community and in the next video. Till then.